So, after the fight with Black Mask, before we get on to our next little three-issue arc, we have a couple of one-off stories with characters that have absolutely terrible character designs, with Batman 46 and 47. Both are written by Doug Mensch, with art by Jim Aparo, colors by Adrian Roy, and edited by Scott Peterson and the legendary Danny O'Neill. We open on the dawn on, after the fight with Black Mask with a voiceover from Batman. I failed, and my head still ringing with it. The pain's rooted at the base of my spine, reading journals everywhere, but it's pain I can't afford to feel. His gang is down, stripped of their false faces, but Black Mask is still free, risen from the river, and still at large. I've failed, and I've got to fix it. Search the whole night, and no sign of him anywhere. Not a word from the shadows, not a glimmer from the darkness. My nose won't stop bleeding. Almost dawn. Time to shift tactics. And to hell with the blood. Meanwhile, at a dockside pub, a guy wearing what appears to be a ski mask with a, a rather a spiked ski mask with a spiked flail coming out at the top goes asking about Black Mask. When he is justifiably mocked for his really stupid costume, he wrecks shop until he's pointed to Sharky's. Seriously, what the hell is with this costume? It's like it's a body stocking with a spiked hood and spiked gloves with a stupid spiked tassel coming out of the head, which we'll see later, even here, he uses as a weapon by swinging his head into things. This story, not to get too far ahead of ourselves, has Metalhead, though we don't know that name yet, and certainly this costume doesn't imply that's his name, wrecking this bar, a second bar, and fighting Batman in an area with trees. That costume, consequently stupid-looking and impractical. If it was just stupid-looking but had a degree of practicality, like how Shredder's outfit makes him dumb, difficult to fight hand-to-hand, -hand, I'd cut him some slack. But here, if your spiked f tassel in your head gets embedded in a beam and a support column in the building or a bar or a tree, what do you do? Do you just kind of jerk your head until it finally comes out? Does this tassel detach? Do you just give up and take off your hood? This is just dumb. People give capes crap, but this is there's nothing on Metalhead's stupid tassel. In the Bat Cave, Bruce puts off sleep, eating, and having his nose fixed. During the day, Tim picks up his dad from his physical therapy appointment with Dr. Chandra Kinsolving. Things are going well, though Dr. Kinsolving is also recommending some acupuncture on top of her existing services, and Jack hates needles. That night, Metalhead goes to Sharky's and trashes the place next. In the Batcave, Robin comes in as Harold is debugging a computer animation program that produces re results that look a lot like Batman the Animated Series, which, as this issue came out, was currently airing. So, as a quick reminder, yes, this entire Nightfall storyline is happening contemporaneously with Batman the Animated Series, so if you went from the show to what's currently going on in the story on the comics, this is what's happening right now. So... Harold is also eating Bruce's intended dinner as he left without eating. Again, this is the third time he's done so. Tim and Alfred walk through the Batcave, and they talk about how and why Batman can't ease back. Also, a quick little note here, since I skipped the issue that introduced Harold in terms of skipped over it when we started the comic. Harold is a nonverbal autistic man who is a gifted engineer. Harold had been making toys for some of the neighborhood kids in the part of Gotham where he lived when neighborhood parents decided that Harold must be a pedophile because he's a men he's a person with a mental disability who got along well with children and decided to form a lynch mob so they could kill him. Yeah, Batman was able to save Harold and fend them off, but not before the, well, lynch mob from the neighborhood decided to, um, was able to destroy his home. Batman took him in, and since then, Harold has been designing some of the Bat gadgets, including a remote microphone that was used in the last arc, to get eavesdrop on a conversation from the other side of a window with Black Mask. That storyline wasn't the first introduction of story of Harold. Harold had previously been being taken advantage of by Penguin, but this is the where Harold is brought into the Bat family. Anyway, in this issue, we get this discussion of Batman's motivations between Robin and Alfred. 
this is slightly joined in co- in, um, in progress. So there's a referencing a little bit of dialogue earlier, but this is the meat of the conversation. I hope these dangerous things he's chosen to do aren't killing him. Well, hold up, Alfie. You're getting too heavy for me here. Just what has he chosen to do? Too much, Master Tim. Far too much for any man on his own. But he's got me, doesn't he? Yes, and me as well. But he's still alone. Will always be alone. In any case, as Bruce Wayne, he attempts to address the city's last social injustices through the Wayne Foundation, and as Batman, he's trying to avenge the long-ago murder of his parents by Joe Chill. Yes and no, lad. Personally, I've always been wary of armchair philo- phil- psychologizing, present discussion notwithstanding, especially that which ascribes his sole motive to revenge. Then what do you call it? On the surface, it's a more overt way of addressing injustice, by bringing criminals to justice. If a wise man's mistakes are the triumph of a fool, you see, then every guilty man who gets away with it is the punishment of the innocent. Not bad, Alfie, and under the surface? I believe his motive is more out of compassion than revenge, one long attempt to prevent his parents' fate, and his own fate, from befalling others. Okay, so if it's not an obsession, then why is he driving himself into the ground over it? Because it's what he does, Master Tim. And it may be that he knows how to do nothing else. Speaking of Batman, currently he's arrived at Sharky's and learned from the injured patients that the guy is named Metalhead and that he's looking for Black Mask and was directed to the Simonis family crypt. Batman reaches the crypt and learns that Metalhead wanted to join Black Mask's gang, which means uh, they has fight. Batman triumphs, but is even further in bad shape as um, when Alfred and Robin pull up and get him back to the Batcave. Batman issue 487 starts off in the Batcave as Alfred and Tim try to help Bruce upstairs and he shrugs them off. Meanwhile, in Blackgate Prison, a gangster named Vincent Morelli asks his lawyer to put a contract on whoever put him in jail. The person is not named, but both know who they are. That said, this is Morelli's first appearance, so it could be a lot of people, and we, the reader, don't know who he's talking about. Could be Commissioner Gordon, could be the Bat, could be um, Bullock, could be a bunch of people. Back in Gotham, Wayne goes to see a doctor and gets a referral to to Dr. Kinsolving, as the doctor who he sees can't find anything physically wrong with him otherwise. On top of a Gotham parking garage, two of Morelli's men go to meet the hitman they're hiring, a man of mystery known only as Headhunter. And, um, his character design doesn't fit the description at all. Seriously, uh, his character, Headhunter's character design has a white mohawk, skull facial tattoos under his eyes, a vest with no shirt, uh, a bunch of animal teeth on a necklace, two crossed bandoliers, two weirdly placed nut, knives strapped to his arms in a way that would probably be back poking him in his bicep this guy would stand out everywhere even in a punk club agent 47 this guy ain't at wayne corp lucius has managed to stop the financial bleeding in the real estate business which is good as bruce is going to be taking something of a step back from daily operations as he tries to recuperate you're at the Gordon residence, Sarah pleads with Jim, who she's married in an annual that I haven't covered, not to go out and contend with something. Back at Stately Wayne Manor, Robin is eating a Selfridge that, sandwich that Alfred made for Bruce, and Bruce didn't eat, while discussing Bruce having taken seemingly a week off while not having actually seemed to have been particularly arrested, and it, and it is in this state that Bruce is now going back on patrol as the bat signal goes up. Batman sees the signal and heads to GCPD, but there he finds not Jim Gordon, but Sarah Gordon instead. After venting a little at the toll that Gotham's particular variety of supercriminal puts on the relationship between her and her husband, she explains that Headhunter was hired to kill Commissioner Gordon. Batman heads out after him. Batman catches up to Gordon right when Headhunter does. Headhunter's first shot misses as Jim goes for his radio to respond to Sarah. However, Headhunter is able to disarm Gordon with a second shot right before Batman is able to intervene. Batman is able to take Headhunter down pretty readily, and then Gordon brings him into the station, though while while everyone regales Gordon with the praise for the color, 
uh, Jim tells Sarah that Batman did the heavy lifting. Later, Sarah puts up the bat signal one more time to thank Batman for saving her husband before telling him in turn afterwards to get out of their life. These two issues, outside of their unintentionally hilarious character designs, do help to set up the greater degrading mental state of Batman and Bruce Wayne, putting him in a state of, set of vulnerability that will be all the greater of a liability once Nightfall proper begins, but we still have a bit of ways to go for that, as next time, the gangs of Gotham are going to war. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.